Hello everybody, my name is Ophical GD. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance in case this uh, commentary audio is not of the best quality. But this is going to be a post-commentary over a complete deconstruction and teardown of my Zotac NVIDIA GeForce GTX 570 Amp Edition. It's missing a screw right there. I got this off of eBay as untested condition and I can't remember the exact price off the top of my head but it was under $30 so really not bad I was surprised by the performance of this card um I have torn it apart already just to uh, clean it up a little bit but this is going to be a further cleaning now I tested it before I tore it apart and it worked I played Minecraft and I was getting like 200 some odd FPS. I tried Doom 2016 and I was getting like 30. And I tried Skyrim and I was getting 60. Now, I didn't have, I wasn't aware of this, but I, I ran out of thermal paste. So when I put it back together, it was unpasted. So I did not use it after putting it back together. And I figured, well, I want to, uh, do a teardown of this graphics card. I have some thermal paste coming in the mail. I got two tubes of Arctic MX4 coming in, so I will be able to repaste this card and check out the performance of it again after this better cleaning. Um, a little bit of introduction of the tools that I have. I have the standard iFixit kit. It's like 35 bucks. Very, very, very useful. Um, I have some 99% isopropyl alcohol. I don't use any of that in this. Uh, in fact, I'm almost out. I have some more of that coming in the mail. I have some Q-tips, a couple of Kleenex, just for wiping things down. And I have a brush that I use to brush off some of the dust that the air can cannot get to. And of course I have a can of electronics duster. I have several cans. But I apologize too if the video keeps going in and out of focus. This is the first time recording video with this phone. It is a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G. And I am actually recording this in 4K uh, 60 FPS. I don't know if I'm going to upload it in YouTube 4K 60, <laughs> but man, this card was kind of a pain to take apart at first, but this second time around it was quite a bit easier. This thing has a lot of screws in it. It rivals the uh, some of the later GTX cards like the 690 and 1060 and whatnot in terms of like screw count. This thing was ridiculous with the amount of screws that it had. Also, I was surprised with the size of the GPU die itself and the heatsink, especially the heatsink. I was extremely surprised with that. It is, uh, it's got some gnarly copper pipes, as you can see there in the background. I really like the way the heatsink looks on this card. I really like the yellow mesh in the background of the black overlay and a couple of times you're gonna see me like bring stuff up to the camera dust it off with the brush and then blow it with the air I have the background video muted so the only audio there is is this commentary and there's going to be a couple of times where I'm quiet or not talking as much yeah there's a close-up view of that heat sink take a look at that that is insane I really am a huge fan of the non-reference edition Zotac, like the old GTX. Um, in fact, this is like the big brother of the other Zotac card I have. I have a Zotac 550 Ti, and it looks just like this one, but it's uh, not as long. It's a little bit shorter. It's got the same black fan, it's got the same yellow mesh with the black overlay. 
the heat sink on it is not as like up to par as this one but this one performs quite a bit better than the 550ti oh i ran crisis with this card i was playing on high settings and i was getting like 50s fps there's a little bubble in this in the zotac sticker on the fan i think i might take that off with a hair dryer and reapply that because it kind of it kind of bothers me a little bit since i know that it's there and with a brush like this it's a it's kind of soft but the bristles are a little bit stiff i use it to brush the components on the front and the back of the pcb and i use like swirl motions and sweeping motions there's absolutely no risk of me breaking any of the capacitors or any of the solder points or anything like that i'm not mashing the brush into the pcb I'm putting a decent amount of pressure to move dust out of the way, but I'm not going to destroy the card. You can just get, as long as the bristles are like soft but a little bit stiff, like a painter's brush or something, you'll be totally fine using that to clean a graphics card. You don't have to worry about it. This thing, as I said, it was missing a screw. I think the previous owner may have tried to take this apart. I'm not entirely sure. It was fairly dusty and had some hair in it when I first took it apart. The second time cleaning through it, I didn't clean much out because there wasn't, there honestly wasn't really a whole lot left. But I just want to make sure because I have no paste, this is still tore apart. I have it sitting um, anti static bubble wrapped inside of my desk drawer just to keep it out of the moisture, keep it safe. It's the the special pink anti-static bubble wrap. I bought like 200 square feet of that stuff at Walmart. It's like 10 bucks. And I got to tell you it's pretty good, especially I'm looking to sell a couple of graphics cards and stuff like that. And I'm going to wrap them up in that and inside the box and all that stuff. That's a different topic for a different video though, really. This card has 1.28 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. It's not GDDR5, it's just regular DDR5. And it's uh, it's odd that it's 1.28 gigabytes. I can't remember off the top of my head how like how many shader cores and all that stuff. I think it runs DirectX. It runs up through DirectX 11. I'm not sure if it does DirectX 12. But it has a 320-bit bus because it's the AMP edition. I don't know if there's like a non-AMP Zotac 570. But this performs, I'd say, about 15 to 20% better than the 550 and or the 550ti i can't say how much better than the 560 i'm trying to get my hands on a zotac 560 but there i was trying to take the uh the cover off without really ruining too much and i decided who knows how old this card was how much it went through I decided to take off all the thermal pads. So, I have some of those coming in the mail. And when I put this thing back together, yeah, you can see that just the sheer size of that GPU die. It is huge. And it's a, uh, a GF110-275-A1. I had to lean over and look at the screen. But the I was surprised... But that's like the size of a Ryzen CPU right there. And yeah, I pointed at the thermal pad. I go ahead and take them all off. I tried to, at first I tried to use a Q-tip. It didn't really work out too good. So then I tried to use my brush. That wasn't really working out. So I went back to the Q-tip, back and forth. 
and eventually I got it off. But then I got a small, very fine flathead tip for my iFixit kit, and I used that to get the rest of the pads off of the back of the cooler plate. Now, because I don't know how old this card is in terms of like how much the owner, the previous owner, had used it, what it's gone through, what kind of life it's seen. It ran kind of warm when I was playing through like Doom and Crisis and stuff. So, oh, my eBay is going off. Uh, it's something. Let me. Oh, it's an auction that I'm winning. Okay, sorry about that. You might not have even heard that. I don't know. But, so, I I made the decision. If I'm going to repaste this thing, I might as well go the slightly extra step and repad it as well. Thermal pads are very, very inexpensive. They're very easy to come by. I'm thirsty. I gotta take a drink. I've been talking for like 12 minutes. Mmm, coffee. Okay. So I think this is the part of the video. You can hear my chair squeaking, probably. I try to take the, the heat sink off, and I'm like, wait. Yeah, it's got four more screws hidden on the back that I was surprised. Like, again, the amount of screws in this thing. And those thermal pads, that one on the far left, <laughs> that's a pretty big pad, and it gave me a little bit of trouble. I kind of scraped a little bit around. I didn't want to ruin the uh, the cooler plate, because I don't know if it's like aluminum or steel or what. It's definitely not plastic. It feels sturdy and heavy. So I didn't really want to, like, scratch it with a screwdriver so I tried to poke as little as I could I kind of rushed it but I kind of took my time as well q-tips work really well at taking off thermal pads especially I'm guessing that these ones have never been changed they're kind of kind of crumbly I guess if that makes sense it looks like they're wet they're still kind of greasy feeling but they crumble off really easily and q-tips work really well and then afterwards I wiped it down with a Kleenex a non lotion infused Kleenex that's the important part you don't want you don't want to use like lotions or peroxide or rubbing alcohol on anything that's like painted aluminum because you're gonna see the the uh, the marks left behind for example um like, if you were to get a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol to clean off that black aluminum, you're going to see the the marks where you wiped with the Q-tip, and they're going to stay there. It's something about the finish on the metal and the rubbing alcohol. They just they don't mix. But these pads came off relatively easily and just wiped down with the Q-tip afterwards, get rid of any of the excess grease and a little bit of residue left over. I just threw these pads away. I'm there's no sense in reusing them. And that way I can get some better like thermally conductive pads and I can cut them to a better size. These ones were quite a bit oversized. That's not a bad thing, but it's it doesn't really do extra thermally when they're oversized it's just a waste really but I can cut them to a better size I can get more higher grade and I can just completely clean this card up to where it's almost like new and then my plan with this card is to after all that I'm hoping I can find a replacement screw for that one that's missing because that's going to bother me, knowing that there's a screw missing. And it's one of those really small uh, GPU PCB screws. It's a small Phillips. It's not the uh, Torx. It's not Hex. 
like what you see on like the the 1080 or the 690 or anything like that and it's not like the ones on like RX 560 or GT 1030 or even maybe the RTX cards have the same or similar I'm just going to get a bag of replacement like GPU screws I don't know where to find those. I tried looking on eBay and all I could find is like motherboard screws and like other PCB screws. So if you know where I can find like replacement screw kits for GPUs, um, even if they're like Torx and I could just replace all of them as long as they're like the same thread, then I'll do that and I'll repad this thing. I'll repaste it. My plan is to either give it away or sell it if I sell it I'll try to get like 80 bucks for it or if somebody really really needs it I could give it to them or I could slap it in a in a, a system that I put together for cheap and then just sell it as a whole system sorry I had to take another drink there it's really important when you take a graphics card apart that you keep track of all your screws and all your tools. You don't want to lose anything. I assume that's how that screw went missing, is the previous owner took it apart, and when they went to put it back together, they lost one of the screws. Luckily, none of them are stripped, and none of them look like they were starting to strip. They all came out fairly easily. Look at that copper, man. Oh, wait, I gotta show off the, uh, the, the metal, but not, I don't know what kind of metal. Backplate, or backplate, yeah. Backplate, cooler backplate. And I brush it down. I get really in there, especially in those fin areas. The, having a long hair brush is really, really nice. Because you can just put all the, the bristles in there. Just sweep back and forth, scrunch it around, and it really, really helps. And this brush cost me like a dollar at Ace Hardware. So if I if I ruin it, I could just go buy like six more, and it wouldn't be nothing, really. It's like Q-tips and Kleenex and Air Duster. It's cheap, it's inexpensive, it's easy to come by. Although when I bought my duster, I bought like three cans of it and the cashier gave me a very dirty look. It's almost like they don't know people like to take stuff apart and clean it. But now we're going to get into the, the juicy part, the heat sink. Oh man, that's such a beautiful heat sink. It's what, three copper heat pipes? and a massive copper pad unfortunately there's a part where the copper's like stripped off and it's like the nickel or zinc or aluminum underneath it's kind of a bummer I mean I could just like touch over it with some copper paste or something I'm, I'm not gonna go that far it could affect the thermals I don't know if I went and did that but I got real deep in there with that brush on this because those aluminum fins are about a uh, half inch deep. And there's, as you can see, quite a few of them. I really like the dispersal of the fins on this card. You have that like circular centerpiece where it sits on the GPU die and then the fan sits on top of that. And then you have the three copper heat pipes coming out, two off to the left and one off to the right. And the two on the left, there's one on top and one underneath. The one on the right is on top. And each one of those has like its own little uh, aluminum fin stack. And they're, I, I imagine they do pretty good if this card is like fully cleaned, um, pasted good, good thermal pads, I'm sure under load you could get temperatures as low as like I don't know 62 maybe even like high 50s also another thing I want to point out I think 
I'm not sure if every graphics card is like this, but it seems to me uh, from every card I've torn apart and every video I've seen on torn apart cards, the uh, the fan has three screws. So I don't know if that's just like universal, but that's something I've seen common with every card. And I should also mention this card takes two six pin PCIe uh, cables. I don't know what the TDP is on this card. It can't be a whole lot. It's an old card. But then again, it's two six pins. So it's more than the single six pin on the 570. And I think the 560 is. Uh, the 550 and the 550 Ti are six pin. The 560, I think, is 6 pin. I don't know. But the regular 570, I think it might be 8 or it might be 6, but it could be 2 6. I don't know. This particular amp edition is 2 6 pin. We're getting near the end of the video here. I do not reassemble it because, well, I don't have paste, I don't have pads. So, and I didn't want to reassemble it on camera. This is long enough as it is. This is like a 23 minute long 4K 60 FPS video. I didn't want to make it any longer than I needed to. So, like I said, I have it disassembled. It's all anti-static wrapped up inside my desk drawer. Here in a couple of days when I get some pads and paste, I'm going to put this thing back together. And I'm going to make a benchmark video. So here at the very end... I take all of the various components and lay them out together on top of my desk mat that I'm using as an anti-static work surface. And there you go. A complete teardown and cleaning of the Zotac NVIDIA GeForce GTX 570 Amp Edition card. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. My name is OpticalGD. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell me what you think about this card if you have it. See you.